San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, a second San Antonio firefighter tests positive for the coronavirus. We have more on the fire department's response. President Trump has stopped funding the World Health Organization during the middle of a global pandemic. I'm Alex Brechet in Washington. I'll have details as to why. And live cam giving us a peek outside. It is another brisk, cool start to your day. Is it going to stick around? We're going to check in with Mike. Good morning to you. It's Wednesday, April 15th. Feels great out there again this morning. Yeah, brisk with it is an understatement. It feels good, doesn't it? It feels really nice. We have another nice day all day. Mm -hmm. All right. day long. And one more morning. Then that's going to And then change. it changes. Yeah, then it changes. Just in time for the weekend. Yeah, you know, it couldn't last forever, but right. uh, but I just enjoy today because, oh, my goodness gracious, it is wonderful out there. Yeah, definitely grab a jacket. It almost feels colder right now than it did at this time yesterday. As a matter of fact, temperatures are actually down just a little bit compared to uh, yesterday. Am I getting a little thing going here? Let me try this one. Let me do something real quickly and see what's going on with my computer. <laughs> Computer's too cold. There, it switched. Hmm, okay. Well, 48 degrees right now in town. 44 Helotus. We are actually down just a couple of notches compared to uh, this time yesterday. We did get down in the 40s yesterday, but not as quickly. 41 in Comfort, uh, Lost Maples, and uh, hmm, it's just not going to do it for me today. Oh, well. Marcus to Marcus to the rescue. Uh, we still have very, very dry air. There's a little bit of a breeze out there this morning, and so therefore we do have a slight wind chill. Winds out of the north to northeast at eight miles per hour. The allergens, yep, they are definitely there once again, but they did come down considerably from the previous day. Molds on the high side. Uh, oak has dropped down. Hopefully we're coming to an end with the oak season. And throughout the rest of today, we are going to see temperatures getting up into about the 70 degree range. We only mustered the upper 60s yesterday which was well below normal and we're still going to be about 10 degrees below normal. Like I said, one more morning of nice, cool, crisp temperatures. Then the humidity starts to come back in, maybe some rain chances and heats uh, heats right around the corner. We'll talk about that in a couple of minutes. Time server traffic right now. The man who came to the rescue, as always, Officer Marcus Trujillo. Thank you, sir. Well, it looks like uh... <laughs> it looks like the computers have their own virus going back and forth between yours and mine. We're going to stick to Transguy. That's easy. Right now, I-10 at Crossroads, you can see not too much traffic out there. So, folks, uh, some are getting out and about, those that have to, those essential, essential personnel. Highway 9036 so far, no problems there. In 1604 at Military, you can see not a lot going on out there, but it's still early. Mark and Leslie. Thank you, Marcus. Coronavirus cases topping 800 in Bear County. This morning, we've learned a second San Antonio firefighter has tested positive for COVID-19. A spokesman for SAFD says both firefighters who tested positive were assigned to the same fire station but worked different shift schedules. Chief Charles Hood says contact tracing for the second firefighter is underway and the crew working with the second firefighter has been sent home to isolate. The firefighter in the second case started to feel sick during their shift on April 11th and immediately sent home to isolate. Hood says that those identified as close contacts are being quarantined as necessary following the recommendations of Metro Health. Let's take a look at the latest numbers of cases available in Bear County. We know about 11,000 people have been tested. 815 tests came back positive. There are no new deaths to report. That number remains at 33. 141 people have recovered from the illness. 89 are in the hospital. In our surrounding counties, Kendall County is seeing an increase in cases with a total of 14. Half of those cases are in Bernie. Kamau County is also reporting an increase with 39 confirmed cases and six deaths. Hayes County reporting 103. Guadalupe County lists 51 confirmed cases of COVID-19. Atascosa County has nine. Medina County, 13. Wilson County is reporting 11. And Bandera County reports two. As major cities deal with the effects of COVID-19, rural towns are starting to get hit hard as well. Wilson County just recently reported its first death. This was from a resident inside the Frank M. Tejeda Veterans Home. And now a second person who came in contact with the first victim has tested positive and is in a San Antonio hospital. The mayor says so far every resident and staff member in the wing where the unidentified man lived have been tested. The Department of State Health Services is now investigating how the coronavirus got inside the facility that's been closed off since March 9th. Right now there are 12 cases in Wilson County. Four have since recovered. 
Meanwhile, President Donald Trump is making global headlines this morning after stopping U.S. funding for the World Health Organization in the middle of the coronavirus pandemic. The announcement coming as plans move forward on how to reopen parts of the country. For more on this, here's ABC's Alex Prichet from Washington. This morning, a peek into what life might look like once shelter in place orders are lifted. Maybe having dinner uh, with a waiter wearing gloves, maybe a face mask, a uh, dinner where the menu is disposable. The president saying he'd work with states on a strategy to reopen and that more than 20 could lift closures soon. But governors on both coasts, including states like California and New York, have already taken action, working together with other states in their regions to collectively decide when to reopen their economies. I'm not going to put any pressure on any governor to open. It's I'm a pivot from the president, governor. who a day ago insisted he had total authority to set the terms of reopening the country. In places like New York, the curve is flattening, but there are still concerns. We still have 1,600 new COVID cases yesterday. And one of the country's top health experts, Dr. Anthony Fauci, had this to say about President Trump's May 1st date to reopen. I think that's that's, you know, a bit overly optimistic. The president also taking action against the World Health Organization, cutting off its funding while conducting a review of the WHO's role in managing the outbreak. American taxpayers provide between 400 million and 500 million dollars per year to the WHO. The United States has a duty to insist on full accountability. And this morning, new fears of a possible second wave of the virus. To prepare, the nation's largest antibody test, 38,000 employees at Beaumont Health Center in Michigan have started screening to see who has the COVID antibodies and could be immune. The CDC director saying these tests need to be in place ahead of the next spike. Also on the testing front, a new plasma treatment is being fast tracked by the FDA. It allows patients who have had the virus and recovered to donate their blood. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. New this morning, police say a man escaped without injury after crashing his vehicle into a pole in the downtown area. Happened just before 3 o'clock this morning in the 500 block of Cesar Chavez. San Antonio police say the man went off the road at the Frio Cesar Chavez exit and crashed into the pole behind the Doubletree Hotel near the Central Police Substation. SAPD says he was detained for possible DWI. No one else was hurt. 4.30, let's see, what time is it? I don't want to double 433, check. 4.33, according to that, that's, no, and 37. 4.37 4 is the correct the time. Our bug is one. actually wrong. 4.37, 48 degrees. Good catch this early in the morning, buddy. I try. Still ahead, laundry in the age of the coronavirus. How should you be washing your clothes these days to make sure they're free of a virus? Next, more on how several of the major airlines are agreed to accept bailouts from the federal government. And live cam giving us a look outside. We're so rotten right now with weather, and it's going to continue at least through today, maybe even tomorrow. Mike has details. Welcome back to GMSA and your morning headlines. Several U.S. airlines have accepted the federal government's terms to receive a bailout worth billions of dollars. American, Southwest, Delta, and United are some of the major companies that have agreed to accept the funds. The stimulus package is a combination of grants which don't have to be paid back and low interest loans which will have to be paid back to the federal government. The $58 billion aid package was part of the coronavirus funding that President Trump signed last month. Some of the money will help airlines fund employee payroll costs through the month of September. Well, stocks will start on a better note today after ending with solid gains. The Dow gained 543 points, while the Nasdaq gained more than 300. The market is now turning its attention to how and when authorities may begin to lift business shutdowns and limits on people's movements. Big companies are also reporting their first quarter earnings. Some companies like Wells Fargo say they were bracing for losses on loans as millions of Americans became unemployed. It's now been one year since the iconic Notre Dame Cathedral caught fire, caused severe damage and its spire to collapse. After months of recovery work, the full extent of the damage is still not known. French President Emmanuel Macron has said he plans to have the landmark reopened by 2024, but amid the pandemic, reconstruction efforts have stalled. France has more than 130,000 coronavirus cases, including more than 15,000 deaths. Right now, it's 442, and we're running in the upper 40s this morning. Still ahead, Jeopardy! host Alex Trebek is keeping busy during his quarantine time. More on a new book he plans to release soon. And next, a lot of small businesses are having to reinvent themselves to survive. How the local salon industry is changing to better suit its customers.
Welcome back. It's just about 445. Well, part of our efforts to defeat the coronavirus come down to cleaning, from washing our hands with soap to using disinfectant sprays and wipes on surfaces. But what about laundry? ABC's Becky Worley has details in your GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, laundry in the age of coronavirus. The CDC says launder items according to the manufacturer's instructions. Use the warmest appropriate water setting and dry items completely. The experts at Good Housekeeping add. So you want to use warm water, the warmest water that's safe for the fabric based on the care label recommendations. But don't put in extra soap thinking it makes things cleaner. And don't overload your washer. You want clothes to circulate freely. We want to make sure that those clothes are, are, are dried well after. It's very likely that even the drying process is going to damage the virus or, or kill the virus. And what should you do if you share a washer dryer in an apartment building or laundromat? And a reality check. Do you need to use bleach or gloves? We have some expert tips coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Becky Worley, ABC News, Oakland. What takes years to build can take only weeks to destroy. That's the painful reality for a lot of small businesses. They are having to reinvent themselves to survive. And for one Stono care salon, it means thinking outside the box of hair color. But when your side's Marilyn Moritz on the pandemic pivot. It's weirdly quiet inside Pure Posh Salon. Chairs are empty. The only cut is to revenue. Our business here is face-to-face -face service, so when you shut that part down, I mean, it really just shut everything down. March 24th, Letty Latham had to close shop, but not her business. I can say that we have definitely come back. We've pivoted. She still has what customers need, so she's making DIY kits, bowls, gloves, custom hair color included. It's beauty in a bag, delivered curbside. Thank you so much. Here you go. She sends a personal tutorial by email. So you do a base color and a highlight. Consultations, no problem, and the shop's Facebook page offers how-to videos. One look at this parking lot, you can see that a lot of small businesses are hurting, so they're having to think differently. Drastic times call for creative measures. Look around and see ways that you can serve the community. Dr. Robert Scherer with Trinity University says now is the time for small businesses to embrace opportunities. Think about uh, unfulfilled needs or new needs for your product or service. Create solutions for people where in fact there may be gaps. Such as what many restaurants have done by selling their groceries. And Latham, who says this is about more than covering gray hair, it's about staying connected. I'm not going to stop what we need to do to make sure we keep our doors open, keep the lights on, and all that kind of stuff. I'm not going to stop. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Right now it's 447. Let's check on the roadways and see how traffic is shaping up. Hopefully no problems out there, Marcus. None yet. And uh, speaking of hair care at home, I have to share a story. Now, I can't give away any names, uh, but uh, one person in a household was going to give themselves a haircut. Asked the other person, give me the number whatever guard. And second person, what, paying attention, just grabbed one and gave it. And oh. next thing you know, bzzz. So, I think it looks very nice. No, not mine. I still haven't cut mine. Oh, is it Tony's? No, this is the first time in, uh, I don't know, 12 years, 13 years. I've actually had to put gel in it. So <laughs> who was it? Oh, I can't tell you guys. Right now, as we take a look at the roadways, still no accidents out there, but uh, 37 there at Hackberry, no problems. Let's move over here. 10 Equilevel, the upper and lower levels, still moving along great. And uh, 410 at Highway 151 so far, no problems there. So, uh, no, can't tell you who it was, but you know, I saw Tony's haircut. It wasn't too bad. Oh, yeah, did you come out, Tony? If you look, if you. A couple you, of spots were really bad, but over. Okay. Well, just, just remember, if I, I told Tony, as long as you keep the mirror behind you, everything looks fine. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, no, that's where the spot's bad. Uh, can we get a hint? Did they used to work here? No, 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 no. Okay, all right. So scratch that name, Mike. Even when the hair cutter says, oh, just a few spots looked bad. Yeah. Way to go, Leslie. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mike, you're next. Hey, we like this pick too, but this almost looks like searing summer heat. Yes. If you didn't know any better, doesn't it? That was the sunset yesterday out there. 
just a couple of clouds. We had a few more clouds hanging around in places yesterday, and we're going to have a lot more sunshine today. It's another fantastic day. Lots of clear skies. And speaking of a person that used to work here, Detective Robert Dart was texting me and said, did you see all the stars? And I was trying to get this camera lined up, and I don't think it's going to go up enough for me. But obviously, that's the moon, and we've got Mars, Saturn, and Jupiter. This, I believe, right there is Mars. And as you, you can see, that little dot right there would be Saturn, according to uh, Detective Dart. And then Jupiter is up there a little bit. So all three of those planets are kind of lined up. So if you head outside right now and look off to the east, you can see them. And if you do head outside right now, grab a jacket because it is pretty nippy out there. 43 Helotus, Bernie uh, 40, Comfort, Kerrville 48 and uh, here at the airport. So temperatures, it looks like overall are down a couple of notches compared to what they were at this time yesterday. Now we still have a little bit of a wind chill to deal with. Uh, very dry air once again. This dry air has been staying in place, so that's one of the main reasons why, obviously, cold air in place, but with that dry air, it doesn't hold the heat in very well, so that's been allowing these temperatures to drop down. The wind is not as strong as what it was yesterday. As a matter of fact, in some spots, there is no wind to speak of. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we won't have that much of a breeze throughout the day today. Got a little bit of moisture loft in the atmosphere. And so once again, maybe the milky shade of the sky, a couple of uh, clouds out there. But like I said, I think we'll see more sunshine than what we had around much of the area yesterday. Although in some places there was a lot of sunshine and, you know, it really depending on where you were yesterday. Uh, humidity again remains low throughout the rest of today and going into tomorrow. So that allows us to have one more cold morning tomorrow. But then the humidity really starts to work its way back in here. We get the dew points back up into the upper 50s, low 60s, and that's definitely going to be the case into Friday. So Friday morning, a uh, whole different story. It's going to be very, very warm, maybe even a couple of sprinkles around here on Friday. And as far as any uh, clouds, we will see the clouds increase tomorrow and then the chance for a couple of showers around here during the day on Friday. Also on Saturday and now it looks like early on Sunday we do have a chance for a couple of showers around the area just the first part of the day. Then we'll clear on out. However, Sunday also we've got uh, some pretty warm temperatures coming on in here, so it's definitely a reality check today. 60 at noon, mostly sunny skies. Good looking day today. Uh, a lot of high wispy clouds that milky shade to the sky. 70 for a high temperature. We only hit 68 yesterday. Still the 70 is 10 degrees below normal. And then tomorrow we start off on the cool side, make it up into the upper 70s. We'll have the humidity come back in the afternoon. A few more clouds, a couple of showers on Friday. Uh, and notice how temperatures come down a little bit of a front moves through here, so that'll hold temperatures down just a little bit. And then all of a sudden Sunday things do really jump up back up into the mid 80s. Wow, we will have some morning showers and thunderstorms around here and we're looking at mid to upper 80s going into the middle part of next week. All right, well, we had to know what was coming and we'll enjoy yes. this while we can Yep, get outside today. Thank you, Mike. Right now we're at 452, 48 degrees. Up next, if you're an American Idol fan, more on what the show plans to do as the pandemic continues. About five chill in your morning spotlight. The COVID-19 outbreak isn't slowing down the live vote episodes of American Idol. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. The search for the next American Idol will continue despite the COVID-19 pandemic. We're getting into the live vote portion of the show starting a week from Sunday, and ABC says the top 20 contestants will be performing from home, while judges Katy Perry, Luke Bryan, and Lionel Richie will also appear from home, along with host Ryan Seacrest and mentor Bobby Bones. We're told the details on how it will all work are coming soon. If you've got cabin fever, maybe you want to check out the new horror movie, Sea Fever, about a fishing expedition that goes horribly wrong. Star Connie Nielsen tells me it's shockingly timely because in the movie, she and her boatmates have to make a tough choice, quarantine or spread a virus. It'll take your mind off of the real thing going on inside, uh, outside and at the same time probably put a little bit of... Uh, you know, the outside will put a little bit of perspective around what the characters are going through. Sea Fever is available now for streaming rental. Jeopardy host Alex Trebek being productive during his quarantine time, finishing his memoir. The book titled The Answer Is Reflections on My Life will be out July 21st. And happy birthday to Harry Potter star Emma Watson. She's 30 today, while Game of Thrones assassin Maisie Williams is 23. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. It's exactly three minutes till the hour of 5, 47 degrees.
Still ahead in our next half hour, six more inmates at the Bear County Jail have tested positive for COVID-19. More on that and a special virtual town hall meeting taking place tonight. Plus, Apple has a new app that shows how well people are following social distancing guidelines. More on that in your morning check bites. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this hour, a second San Antonio firefighter test positive for COVID-19. What the city is doing to protect our first responders. Plus, the CDC and FEMA are announcing new protocols for nursing homes amid the COVID-19 pandemic. Still an unusually cold morning out there as we look back towards downtown on live cam. Mike's forecast is coming up. We've made it to midweek. Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday, April 15th. Thanks for being with us this morning. If you do have to head out early, you probably need a little jacket. You do. 47 at last check. Uh, temperature could still fluctuate a little, Mike Osterhage. Oh, yeah. We'll probably still drop down a couple of more degrees in the next few hours. And, yeah, it's just one. Yesterday was so, so nice, despite the fact that uh, some folks did see a pretty good cloud cover throughout the day, which uh, helped the whole temperatures down. We only made it the upper 60s yesterday. Yeah, 47 here in town New Braunfels at 44, 41 up the road in Rock Springs. Humidity is still low. Dew points are still down in the 30s. It's not as windy as what it has has been the past couple of days, but still, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm kind of frogging my throat this morning. There's enough of a breeze to take these temperatures and then shave off a little bit. So it feels like 44 here in town, 44, 42, pardon me, in Balverde. Notice how number didn't change up around comfort because there is no wind to speak of, but with the no light wind that's allowing the heavier, cooler air to settle down on the surface. So we're already starting to see some uh, 30s and 38 right now in Lost Maples and uh, wind out of the north at about six miles per hour. So again, not too bad. And mold is still on the high side, although both mold and oak went down considerably on yesterday's reading compared to the previous day. And of course, the update's going to be coming out in about a couple hours or so. So mostly clear, cool, mostly sunny today. Beautiful again, a 70 for a high temperature, still 10 degrees below normal. And then tomorrow we have another cool start then it's going to start to get warmer and we'll start to see the humidity begin its return in the afternoon a few more clouds around here so going into friday and the weekend a couple of showers are possible friday and saturday we will actually be cooler there's a little bit of a front coming through so instead of upper 70s it'll be low 70s friday and saturday and then sunday it's going to be hot we'll be up in the mid 80s and we'll start off with a couple of uh, storms on sunday and then clear out during the day it looks like after, you know, this nice little stretch of cool weather, it's going to be hot next week. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Marcus Trujillo. Well, thank you, Mike. And folks taking a look out there so far, still looking pretty good on the roadways, on the highways. So far, no issues. Let's go through a couple of TransGuide cameras. I-10 and Frio, no problems there. All the way through I-10 at Crossroads. You can see more than enough room out there. Just make sure you don't let that speed get away from you once you do head out. I-10, De Zavala, eastbound, westbound lanes, no problems. Then 410 in Jackson Keller, still looking great. Mark and Leslie. Thank you, Marcus. This morning we've learned that a second San Antonio firefighter has tested positive for COVID-19. At the same time, the San Antonio Fire Department is using enhanced guidelines for first responders. Fire Chief Charles Hood says the department now has two ambulance decontamination sites and is taking temperature checks three times a day. The department also has 840 potential rooms for isolation to offer first responders and patients who may have been exposed to the virus. More than 60 of those rooms are secured and ready. SAFD says anyone using the rooms cannot leave, cannot have visitors, and cannot smoke, drink, alcohol, or do drugs during that stay. Six or more inmates at the Bear County Jail have tested positive for COVID-19. That brings the total number to eight. Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf says he expects more positive cases to be confirmed there. He also says they're trying to prevent the spread as much as possible. They are protecting inmates by doing things like identifying those who are medically at risk and who may have been exposed. They're also increasing hygiene efforts and expanding testing capacity for inmates and staff showing symptoms. So while our numbers are low, we expect to continue to have some issues at the jail and we're taking all the steps that we can reasonably take uh, with respect to stemming the uh, tide of it. In addition to the inmates, 14 deputies, two civilian employees, one Bear County facilities maintenance employee and a UHS nurse assigned to the jail have also tested positive for COVID-19. Many local organizations are developing technologies to fight the virus. The growing list of San Antonio's medical and academic research institutions include the Texas Biomedical Research Institute, the Southwest Research Institute, and UT Health San Antonio. 
Later tonight, we will hold a virtual town hall meeting. Mayor Ron Nirenberg and local bioscience experts will talk about solutions they're exploring right now here in San Antonio. And we want to know any questions that you might have. You can submit your questions right now on KSAT.com. Our panel of experts will be answering them during our live broadcast. Again, it's tonight, starting at 6.30. We will be live streaming the virtual town hall from 6.30 to 8 on KSAT.com. So far, there have been, there have not been any new cases of coronavirus, rather, at area nursing homes. That's according to Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf. But now the federal government is stepping in to take care of the elderly. The CDC and FEMA announcing a new data collection protocol in hopes of finding a way to save lives. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has the story. This morning, a new fight to help those most vulnerable to the coronavirus. We're making the assumption that COVID-19 is in most if not all of our nursing homes. In New Jersey, dozens of nursing home residents have died, leading first responders to evacuate the entire facility. We were barely able to give basic care for our patients at the beginning because of the staffing shortages. It comes as ABC News learns that one quarter of COVID-19 deaths in New York have been traced to live-in facilities. In Massachusetts, that number is a staggering 45% of all deaths. The spread there so bad that the National Guard in full protective gear was called in to test residents in this senior living facility. They should know about this virus. The rest of the world knows. Deborah's mother died in a nursing home in Washington state where the U.S. outbreak began. She's suing, claiming the facility could have done more to stop the virus. But the rapid spread is proving difficult to stop. In Virginia, a single home has now lost 45 seniors to the virus. But many residents have nowhere else to go. One nursing home resident in California is set to be released from the hospital after being treated for the virus. But she says she's scared to return to her home. No, no, no. Why? Because I, I, I don't want to die. Despite the higher risk, one nursing home director says it is possible to keep facilities free of the virus. You have a sniffle, you're out for two weeks. I'm taking care of so many families, loved ones, and I would want the same for my family if they were here. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. 506, 47 degrees. Still ahead, Google may start adjusting the quality of video captured by your Nest security camera. We'll tell you why. And speaking of Nest, we have a live stream of a bird nest from one of our KSAP photographers online right now. We have more on that coming up next. And taking you outside once again with live cam. A couple of nice days still ahead before we get some rain chances and warmer weather. Mike has details. Welcome back. It's 10 minutes after 5. In your morning consumer headlines, Walmart takes a step to help people who may be more vulnerable to the coronavirus. The retailer is launching a special pickup hour at select locations. It's reserved for customers over 60, first responders, and others who are designated high risk. Employees are also following enhanced distancing and sanitation orders to help prevent the spread of the disease. Customers also don't have to sign for, sign for their order. Their purchases are loaded into their vehicles. More information is available on Walmart's website. General Motors ready to ship its first round of ventilators. The automaker says it hopes to ship 600 devices by the end of the month. Federal government gave GM a nearly $500 million contract to produce 30,000 ventilators. The company started building them last month at its plant in Indiana. The ventilators will go to the national stockpile. GM says it hopes to have the entire order completed by the end of August. A KSAT 12 photojournalist has set up a live stream of a bird nest that he found in his own backyard. Photographer Bill Caldera said the birds set up the nest on his patio last week and they've since laid five eggs. Here's a look at how they're doing so far. I'm in my backyard and as you can see behind me, there is a flower pot with a bird nest in it. It's made out of yarn because I saw the dad bird bring the mom some yarn to put in the nest and then it's also made out of leaves. And the bird lives in there and it's laid five eggs. And my mom thinks we should name all the five eggs the name of the week. I think we should name them Eeny, Meeny, Miny, Mo. A couple of times we saw the mom and dad bird starting to like help each other. We think the bird is called a Carolina Wren. It has a yellow belly and it's got brown feathers. It's kind of tiny, like a little chick. 
They like to eat insects. The camera has showed us some funny things, like the um, bird hopping out of the nest. He's like, I'm here to take my picture, please. And he flew away. In the daytime, there's light, so there's color, and you can see the bird. But at nighttime, it's all black and white. I'm William Caldera in my backyard, KSAT 12 News. All right, is he adorable or what? William yeah. rocked the update. Simple pleasures, yes, even a bird nest is fun to watch these days. Oh my good, especially when you have an aerator like that. Mm -hmm. You can take a look at the live cam of the birds right now. Just go to ksat.com, look for bird nest and watch. You can also find other fun activities in our KSAT Kids section. Uh, Bill and Shannon should be so proud. He's adorable, very articulate. 513, 47 degrees. Still ahead in entertainment news, more on the Canadian rapper Drake. He has snagged another Billboard Music chart record. And next, we'll tell you more about Apple's new tool that shows how well people are following social distancing guidelines. It's starting to happen every day. People are surprising themselves. The moment they realize they can do more with less asthma. Thanks to Dupixent, the add-on treatment for specific types of moderate to severe asthma. Dupixent isn't for sudden breathing problems. It can improve lung function for better breathing in as little as two weeks and help prevent severe asthma attacks. It's not a steroid, but can help reduce or eliminate oral steroids. Don't use if allergic to Dupixent. Serious allergic reactions can occur, including anaphylaxis, which is severe. Tell your doctor right away about signs of inflamed blood vessels, such as rash, shortness of breath, chest pain, tingling, or numbness in your limbs. Tell your doctor if you have a parasitic infection and before stopping any asthma medicines, including oral steroids. Do more with less asthma. Talk to your doctor about Dupixent. 516 Apple's launched a new tool that shows how well people are following social distancing guidelines. ABC's Kenneth Moten has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, Apple jumps into the social distancing information game. The company is releasing mobility data taken from Apple Maps. Users can find information from more than five dozen countries. Apple insists the movement data is not tied to individual Apple IDs. And Google is trying to ease the strain on broadband networks with more people home and using devices. Google is reducing the quality of video capture by Nest security cameras. All settings will be rolled back to the default. Those already below that level will be left alone. And a 19-year-old helped his English professor father liven up his virtual lecture. The professor runs the writing center at Wittenberg University in Ohio. Lucas stood behind dad in costumes and acting pretty silly there. Together they put the wit in Wittenberg. Those are your deck bites. Have a great day. Now that's a lot of fun. Yeah, it is. He's hilarious. Let's check traffic right now. It is 517 on your Wednesday. Marcus. And things are still looking great out there. That's uh, Highway 90 at 36th Street. And take a look, 1604 at Military. And just imagine, five weeks ago, right around 6.30, 7 o'clock, this was jam-packed with folks. And right now, and it'll pretty much stay like this. You'll have some traffic, but nothing that should delay you out there. 1604 at Hausman, no problems there. Then I-10 and Culebra, you can see the upper and lower levels still running smoothly out there. Let's move over here. 37 in Hackberry. North and southbound lanes have more than enough room. No delays. Roads are dry. Visibility not bad considering it's still dark out there. Yes, Mike? You know, it's, it's funny seeing that guy's son walk behind the camera. When I was home on that voluntary quarantine and doing some live shots and for SA Live, and I'd have to warn, especially the boys, I'm on TV. Right. Don't come traipsing down the stairs just in your underwear or something like that. Sure. Right, because you'll yeah. be on TV. And, well, and, and also you got to watch out because my wife has been doing some exercise uh, classes online. And yesterday I came home after the show to change for us. She goes, okay, just heads up. They can see you. Oh, yeah, yeah that's right. It's okay. not just when you're so. on live television. Everything's kind of live now because everybody right. does and it virtually. You do all these, you know, like the Zoom meetings yeah. and, or the workout things or something like that. So Here's a new perspective to reality show. Yeah. Just a <laughs> word of caution, folks. So, hey, uh, yesterday was absolutely gorgeous out there with a couple of uh, clouds. Beautiful. Now, some folks did have a lot more in the way of cloud cover yesterday. Others, 
some sunshine as in this picture and it was beautiful out there uh, this morning. We've got a lot of clear skies. Obviously the moon is right up there near the uh, that banner and in and around the moon and detective uh, Robert Dart was pointing this out that Mars, Saturn and Jupiter are lined up. It doesn't show up very well in this picture. Sorry about that, but they are lined up right by the moon up there. So if you uh, head out this morning, Check it out. Grab the jacket issue too, though, because boy, it's nippy out there. 41 Bernie stage, 43 Balverde, and some 30s out in uh, Kerrville Comfort. A little bit of a wind chill in places. There's not much of a breeze at all out there in the hill country, so no wind chill to deal with. Uh, 44 is what it feels like here in town. Wind chills down to 38 right now up around uh, Bernie stage. Very, very dry air, so that's allowing temperatures to drop down. This is one of the big factors. Obviously, we had cool air move in here, but one of the big factors allowing these temperatures to get as cool as they've been the past few days is that the dry air has been sticking around here. Wind, just a light little breeze. We're not going to have much of a breeze throughout the day. Some moisture aloft in the atmosphere, of course, yesterday. If you didn't have that low level cloud cover, you notice that we had this sort of that milky shade of the sky, and that's what this is going to be showing today. But still, it's going to be a gorgeous, gorgeous day with temperatures only about 70 for a high and the humidity. Again, it's been low. It's going to stay low throughout the day, so it's going to stay very comfortable today. Tomorrow morning as well. Then we go into the afternoon and these numbers are going to start to uh, Start their climb. We'll make it into the uh, mid upper 50s, low 60s for dew points by tomorrow night. And then Friday, whole different story. We're going to have a lot of humidity around here as the humidity comes back in. We may actually have a couple of sprinkles to start off on Friday. And then a shower or two is going to be possible throughout the day. Now, what's interesting though is Friday, we will have a front moving on through. Not a big strong one, but instead of upper 70s like tomorrow, we'll be about low 70s. That'll be the situation on Saturday as well. So First of all, back to Thursday, clouds increase late in the day. There's that slight chance of a shower or two on Friday. Same thing on Saturday, low 70s both days. And then Sunday, there's another wave that's going to come through overnight Saturday and early Sunday, maybe a few showers and thunderstorms. Then we'll be clearing on out later on in the afternoon on Sunday. And temperatures are really going to be shooting up there. As a matter of fact, we're going to be on the other side of normal by Sunday afternoon. 60 today at noon, mostly sunny skies, and then high temperature up to 70. Normal highs 80. We'll take it because you know what's coming in a couple of months. Uh, tomorrow, 77 degrees. Another nice, uh, refreshing, cool, crisp start in the 40s, but not so cool and crisp. On Friday morning, we'll have some uh, sprinkles around there, maybe a shower or two. Same thing Saturday, a little bit lower temperatures, low 70s, and then mid 80s, mid to upper 80s, Sunday into the middle of next Boy, week. Boy, what a change is coming. No kidding, yep. but it's been a nice run. It's been nice having the, the windows and the doors open if you can. Time to swap the wardrobe. That's right. And the air conditioning not running constantly. Yeah, that's yeah. been nice yep. for my bill, for sure. Yep. Thank you, Mike. 522, 47 degrees. Coming up next, the cast of That Thing You Do is reuniting for a special online watch party. We'll tell you when it starts. Ah, oh, great flick. 525, even if you're stuck at home and there's a good chance you are, you can still listen to live music. You can also watch your favorite movie with other people. CNN's David Daniel has that and more in your Hollywood Minute. Okay, turn on. <laughs> If you still smile hearing that thing you do, prepare to share the feeling. The stars of the 1996 movie and special guests are taking part in a live watch party on YouTube in support of the Music Cares COVID-19 Relief Fund. The rock film rolls at 7 p.m. Eastern on Friday. Search The Wonders Watch Party on YouTube for the link. I'm going to show you how to get it. It go right foot up, left foot slide. Left foot up, right foot slide. Drake's Tusi slide shows you don't have to sweat lip syncing in videos if you're masked up against the coronavirus. It's also another record breaker for the Canadian rapper. Billboard says Tusi slide debuted atop the Hot 100 chart, making Drake the first male artist to debut three number ones on that chart. That ties him overall with Mariah Carey, who had three number ones back in the 90s. We can steal time. When the pandemic forced Neil Finn of Crowded House home from the road, he didn't stop playing. For several weeks, Finn has been performing live from his music room or with his sons, Liam and Elroy Finn, at Liam's home studio nearby. You can hear him daily at 6 p.m. Eastern at neilfinn.com slash fangradio. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. I was a big Crowded House fan back in the day. Really? Yep. Learning new things about you.
926, 47 degrees on your Wednesday morning. Still ahead in our next half hour, social distancing appears to be the new normal for the time being, but some health experts are saying could last until 2022. Plus, are you worried about your 401k? We'll tell you what you need to know before you think about moving any money around. And a World War II veteran celebrating another victory after defeating the coronavirus. More on his story still ahead. Good morning. It is Wednesday, April 15th. Thanks for being with us this morning. Even though it's April 15th, you don't have to file your taxes by today. That's today we news. normally dread. I know, but not today because of the pandemic, of course. But we'll have details coming up in our newscast about when you do have to. That is no typo on your screen. 47 degrees at San Antonio International Airport. We need to enjoy it while we can, right, Mike? Yes, indeed. Okay, question. Does the fact that you don't have to, you know, it's not tax day, make up for all the, <laughs> the coronavirus? And the... No, I don't think it does. <laughs> It's one, it's one little bright spot, we'll put it that way. Hey, speaking of a uh, little bright spot, right up there at the very top of your screen, that's the moon. And if you look off uh, to the east before the sun comes up and look kind of in and around that area of the moon, you can see Mars, Saturn, and Jupiter, three really, really bright spots in the sky. And they're sort of lined up. Thank you to Detective Robert Dart for pointing that out to me. 43 right now, Balverde, a uh, pair of 38s, Comfort, and Kerrville, 42 in Bandera, and Rio Medina at 41 degrees. In some places, there is a little bit of a wind chill, namely here in town, up around Bernie, and New Braunfels feels like 40 degrees. Wind is not as anywhere near as breezy as what it was the past couple of days, but still just a little bit of it out there. And uh, mold is on the high side. Oak is moderate. Both of those numbers dropped down significantly from the previous days. Pecan and grass are are also showing up on the low side. Temperatures, we're going to make it up to 60 today at noon. A lot of sunshine, a lot more sunshine than yesterday. You know, a lot of folks were actually kind of socked in with clouds yesterday, but today it's going to be just beautiful. We'll make it up to 70, still 10 degrees below normal. Another cool start tomorrow. Then we start to see the changes. And we do have a couple of chances for rain. Not great chances, but a few chances for some showers coming up uh, as we go in toward the weekend. Details in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here is Officer Marcus Trujillo. Anything big going on, sir? Well, Mike, as we take a look at the roadways, uh, we do have an accident on the highway. So we're looking down the southeast side, eastbound main lanes of 410, right as you're approaching the interchange with 37. There'll be a number of emergency vehicles out there responding to that two vehicle major accident. Other areas, not too bad. This is uh, 35, 37. The interchange looking back towards the downtown area, looking south on 35. And so far, no problems there. Leslie? Thanks, Marcus. Well, the San Antonio Fire Department is confirming its second case of COVID-19. Two firefighters have now tested positive for the illness. Katrina Weber's downtown with a live report. And we understand, Katrina, that they both work out of the same fire station. Well, that's right. In a written statement, Fire Chief Charles Hood confirmed it all late last night. He says they did work out of the same station, but they worked different shifts. Now, the statement does not mention which station that is, nor does it say how the second firefighter may have contracted the coronavirus. It says that firefighter began feeling sick at work last Saturday and was sent home, then tested later. The crew working with that person also was sent home in the meantime to self-isolate. This all happened one day after the first San Antonio firefighter began showing symptoms of the illness. In the statement, the chief says both Metro Health and the fire department are doing what they call contract, contact tracing for both of those firefighters. That is figuring out who may have had close contact with them. He says once they get those test results, they will take steps immediately to quarantine those other people and, if necessary, to test them, too. Reporting live downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. There were more than 2,400 coronavirus-related deaths reported in the U.S. Tuesday, according to Johns Hopkins University. As CNN's John Lawrence reports, that's a grim one-day total for the U.S., and it happens as leaders talk about a gradual reopening of the country. Social distancing may not be distant anytime soon. If the virus is around in a few people and we aren't uh, imposing control measures, it will resurge. Researchers at the Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health say COVID-19 still poses a serious threat and measures like stay-at-home orders and school closures may be needed intermittently until at least 2022. If we could get a vaccine, that would be a total game changer. Um, that's a long way off. That's probably almost certainly a year off. Meanwhile, the White House looks toward restarting the economy. 
The plans to reopen the country are close to being finalized. Federal social distancing guidelines are scheduled to expire on May 1st. But Dr. Anthony Fauci, the top infectious disease expert in the nation, calls reopening the country then overly optimistic. And some governors from both parties say they're being cautious. Let's not make the mistake of pulling the plug too early as much as we all want to. Which means at least some form of social distancing will likely be the new normal for a while longer. It's pretty unlikely that there are going to be sports with spectators in the in the stands this fall and winter. Um, you know, I, I really hope to be wrong. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Also making headlines today, South Korea is holding its first major election in the midst of the pandemic. They are voting on a new parliament at Seoul polling locations. People were seen wearing masks and gloves and waiting to have their temperature taken. Meanwhile, at least 47 other countries have postponed their elections. YouTube has launched a new tool to help small businesses with their online presence amid the pandemic. The free video builder aimed at helping companies that don't have resources to create their own videos from scratch. The tool has a variety of layouts and options to make customized videos that are 6 to 15 seconds long. Businesses just need a Google account, a YouTube account, and sign up with the video builder. 535, 47 degrees. Still ahead when it comes to your money, you might be tempted to take funds out of your 401k right now. Why financial experts say you should be thinking about doing just the opposite. And next, a closer look at how all states are doing when it comes to responding to the COVID-19 pandemic. And live cam giving us a look outside. Enjoy the weather. We're in for a couple of more days of beautiful weather before rain makes its way into our forecast. While the U.S. debates whether to reopen the economy, new hotspots are emerging from Iowa to Colorado. Other states are seeing their death tolls peak. ABC's Megan Tavrizian has the details. This morning, coronavirus hotspots creating new concerns across the country. Every one of these numbers is a person. It's one of our neighbors. It's one of our friends. Louisiana reporting its deadliest day yet. The death toll there rising above 1,000. It's a little bit like going to war. In Denver, authorities are bracing themselves for a spike in cases, rushing to build a field hospital to accommodate a potential rush in patients. At the end of the day, it's about people's lives. Meanwhile, states that have resisted stay-at-home orders now facing new outbreaks. South Dakota, now home to one of the biggest coronavirus clusters in the country, after nearly 450 workers at a pork processing plant in Sioux Falls tested positive. The mayor asking the state's governor to take action. We're growing increasingly concerned about um, the need to mitigate that spike before um, it overwhelms our hospitals. In Iowa, at least 152 cases are confirmed in Louisa County, the county in the state without a single hospital. That outbreak now tied to a Tyson meat processing plant. Who's the sickest patient in the world? Healthcare workers like this nurse in Pennsylvania are overwhelmed, battling exhaustion after 16 hour shifts. I just closed my eyes what I thought would be a minute and I woke up three hours later. While others, like this doctor in New York City, are heading back to work after fighting the virus themselves, putting their lives at risk once again, despite not knowing if they are fully immune. If this is something that we could get reinfected with. I think we're in pretty bad shape. Megan Tavrizian, ABC News, New York. Time check 540, 47 degrees. Coming up next, many are wondering what to do with their 401k as the pandemic continues. More on what financial experts are saying about how you should protect your retirement. Five forty-three. The drop in the financial markets has caused many people to worry about their retirement plans, or four hundred one ks, and savings. R.J. Marquez spoke with a finance professor at UTSA about what you need to know before you think about moving your money around. Because of this uh, pandemic, has been a virtual uh, shutdown of economic activity. Dr. Karen Banat, the department chair and professor of finance at UTSA, understands the fear people might have with the current state of the market. Those saving for retirement are probably not feeling too great right now. But Banat says those anxieties shouldn't cause you to do something you might regret. I think that if you have stocks, it's a good idea not to sell right now. And the best thing you can do 
is really not look at your 401k plan. Close it. But Nat says, while people might be tempted to take money out from their 401ks, in fact, you should be thinking about doing the opposite. The evidence shows that during any time period when returns are very low over a particular time period, it is very likely that you'll have excess returns over the next three to five years. So that's really the time to buy and not the time to sell. For people with money or savings in the bank, Banat advises to keep it there. He said this is not like the financial crisis of 2008. Banks are stable and the Federal Reserve is pumping money into the system. This is really a health um, uh, a pandemic, as we all know. and. Uh, uh, it's not because of economic imbalances. So the government has stepped in, they are aggressive on finding cures and vaccines, they have a stimulus in place. The coronavirus is causing a huge ripple effect in our economy. Businesses have closed and a record number of people have lost their jobs. But there is hope for workers that they will soon be able to get back on their feet more quickly than during other economic crises. If you have a extended economic uh, crisis or a recession uh, of the type that we had last time, it takes a while for that to play out. Three years, four years, five years. But not as optimistic, we can weather the financial storm and get back to normal. As things start to open up, uh, we will see increased economic activity and it is painful, but my thought is that things will recover more quickly than they did in 2008. I'm RJ Marcus. To see more stories like this, watch Case at News at 9, Monday through Friday. Looks like coronavirus will affect a well-known film festival. Organizers of the Cannes Film Festival say they no longer plan to hold the event this summer. The festival originally scheduled to take place in May, but the pandemic forced them to change the date to late June or early July. Now they say they must postpone again, and there's no word on when or if the event could take place. Google is honoring a range of workers responding to the COVID-19 pandemic in a Google Doodle series. They're generally one-offs for special days, but sometimes are part of a series for events like the Olympics. This special two-week series will thank frontline workers in healthcare, sanitation, food service, and more. Doodles from last week featured medical workers, custodial and sanitation workers, farmers, and grocery employees. Right now it's 546. I got an alert that we have an accident out there. We do down there on the southeast side, so we're going to move the map uh, down to 410 37 area. Eastbound 410 uh, right at, at 37 should be just about uh, cleared up right now, so watch out for that accident. Uh, 35 37, the interchange here in the downtown area, still looking pretty good that, uh, right now. So remember, stay home, work safe, but if you have to leave, it's advisable, cover up. Okay. Good idea. Yeah. We're going to talk Humane Society real quick, I yep, believe. Yep, uh, they've been sending, of course, there's still pets in all the shelters that need to be adopted, and they sent in a couple of them. Don't forget about all the uh, donations, you know, gift of a second chance it helps others. If you adopt, you open up, uh, you actually help out two animals, the one you adopt, and also the, uh, the cage that you open up for another one out there. They have a wish list on Amazon if you would like to send some Something in, so emergency fund donations, sahumane.org. And again, the address is 4804 Fredericksburg Road, 2267461. I don't know what the what the rules are there about going to see any animals. You need to contact uh, them sure first. They, yeah, yeah, I think they have a lot of pictures online as well. But give them a call or go online, and they would have all the rules if you want to uh, find out more about you know, trying to check out some little pups and kittens out there. A good plan. Yes, indeed. All right, great picture. You know, and, and look at the captions. I saw this picture while on a little bit of a walk. And you, you know, take a little walk around the neighborhood and you don't know what you're going to be finding. Check out the neighbor's flowers and then take a picture. So that's what I have to do. Anyway, thank you very much for the, uh, the KSAC Connect picture. It's going to be another spectacular sunrise this morning like it has been the past couple of days. And it's cold out there. 41 degrees, Rio Medina, Bernie Stage, 47 Randolph and uh, 38's up there. Kerrville Comfort. Notice, well, Kerrville now has a wind chill down to 35 degrees. I think that's the coolest wind chill that we've seen in the past couple of days with this little uh, bit of fallish weather that we have. Wind is just 
five miles per hour, but with such cold temperatures, doesn't take much. Uh, it's not going to be obviously as windy as what it has been the past couple of days. Now, as far as the humidity, which is very low, it's going to be staying low, and this is one of the reasons why we've been enjoying such a pleasant weather. And dew points will stay 40s, 30s for uh, today, for the start of the day tomorrow. So another nice crisp morning tomorrow. Then the humidity starts to come back in here throughout the afternoon. We get these dew points mid upper 50s low 60s. You start to notice it a bit more and that's going to hold temperatures up on Friday morning. And as that moisture surges back in here from the Gulf of Mexico, we may actually see a little bit of maybe some mist and drizzle Friday morning and then even a couple of showers later on in the afternoon. We're going to have lots of sunshine today. Tomorrow we start off with clear skies and then a few more clouds in the afternoon. Friday chance for a couple of showers. Not really a great chance of rain, maybe 30%. That's going to be the call pretty much on Saturday, I think, as well. Uh, shower, perhaps a thunderstorm. There is a weak front that's going to be moving through on Friday. Now, it's not going to just really knock temperatures down to where they have been because we're not really going to get rid of all that humidity, but it is going to put temperatures, high temperatures, back down to the low 70s instead of the upper 70s like it will be tomorrow. Sunday, actually late Saturday, Sunday, there's another disturbance, little uh, wave coming through here, and that's going to touch off a few showers and thunderstorms early in the day on Sunday. Then we'll clear out in behind that, and we are going to be heating up then Sunday going into Monday and going into net next week. So it's, you know, this nice little bit of fall weather that we've been having is going to be a thing of the past. We'll make it back up into the mid 80s by Sunday, and then we're looking at upper 80s, close to 90 by about the middle part of next week. Look at how many freezing readings there are around the area. I heard a report that in portions of the Upper Peninsula of Michigan picked up about a half a foot to a foot of snow and they had some drifts up there in the past couple of days. Yeah, and it's mid-April, 60 today at noon, mostly sunny skies. Uh, jacket's going to be a good idea throughout most of the morning, and then later on today, we get up to 70. Plenty of sunshine out there, a couple of clouds, maybe that milky shade of the sky, but just a gorgeous day. Beautiful start again tomorrow, nice and cool and crisp. And then look at the big difference, 48 to 62 Friday morning, and we'll have uh, some sprinkles Friday morning, maybe a shower or two. And same thing on Saturday. Notice how the, also the high temperatures Friday and Saturday are going to be right around 73 degrees after that weak front moves through here. But the humidity will definitely be sticking around then Sunday. Look at that 65 starting off. A couple of morning showers and a thunderstorm back in the mid to upper 80s next week. Wow. And quite a bounce back by Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. There are going to be a lot of 90s out there by Tuesday. So. Uh oh. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Mike. Right now we are at 551, 47 degrees. Up next, some good news as a World War II veteran wins yet another battle by defeating the coronavirus. Wednesday lottery numbers pick three, 162, Fireball zero, daily four, 1999, Fireball four. Your cash five numbers, 5, 15, 17, 20, 27. And mega numbers today, mega millions, 29, 47, 65, 69, 70 with a mega ball of seven. Good morning. Coming up here on a Wednesday on GMA, President Trump pulling funding from the World Health Organization, blaming the agency for its response to the crisis as he faces criticism for his handling of the pandemic. The president also doing a reversal after claiming total authority to reopen the country. We're going to have the latest on all of this coming up right here on GMA. Welcome back to Good Morning San Antonio. A reminder that we will be holding a virtual town hall on the local coronavirus efforts tonight. San Antonio Mayor Ron Nierenberg and a local bioscience experts, or rather experts, will be talking solutions uh, that they're exploring right here in the Alamo City. And we want the questions that you might have. You can submit them right now on KSAT.com. Our panel of experts will be answering them during our live broadcast again tonight. It starts at 6.30. We will be live streaming the virtual town hall from 6.30 to 8 on KSAT.com. And no matter the hour, we're always online at KSAT.com. Our web team keeping track of the coronavirus pandemic with the latest numbers and the many efforts underway to help our community through this trying time. We have an entire page dedicated to the effort all online at KSAT.com. 
CDC says adults 65 and older are at the highest risk for severe illness from COVID-19, but some are defying the odds. A 99-year-old Brazilian World War II veteran was led out of a hospital in Brasilia yesterday to a chorus of cheers. Officials say Armando Pivata defeated the coronavirus after eight days in the hospital, almost 100 years old and still winning battles. Well done, sir. Right now, we're about three minutes away from the top of the hour. Still ahead, the next hour of Good Morning San Antonio. The tax deadline has been extended, but that doesn't mean you won't have to do them at all. We'll tell you how to make sure you don't get contacted by the IRS. Officer Marcus Trujillo is here getting us updated on any incidents. There's 10 at Days of Allah showing up on TransGuide. You're watching GMSA. Much more to come in our next hour. is the unfortunate number for the San Antonio Fire Department. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. The department now confirming its second case of the coronavirus. I'll tell you more about it. One of the biggest questions looming, at least here in San Antonio, is when can we return to work? Well, all of that predicated on when we expect to see the peak of the virus. Good morning, I'm Max Massey. I'll explain what models are being used to determine that and why. It's Wednesday, April 15th, which originally meant tax day, but due to coronavirus that has changed. There's now an extension, but what about penalties and interest? I have that answer just ahead on GMSA. And we may be in mid April, but we're in the mid 40s out there. It's a chilly start to your Wednesday. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Hi there. Good morning. It is Wednesday, April 15th. And it feels like fall out there still. So you need a light jacket if you're having to head out early this morning. Can't believe we're down to 45 degrees at last check, Mike Osterhage. Yeah, we dropped two notches in the past hour. This mm -hmm. is fantastic. And I'm wearing cold. my fall boots. I guess I have to put them away, though, after a couple days. Uh, like yes. Yeah, you're going to be wearing fall or spring flip-flops in a couple of days. But uh, let's just enjoy <laughs> this. Uh, and in, what, maybe 15 minutes, uh, half an hour or so, we should start to see the glow of the uh, the sunrise out there. It's going to be a spectacular sunrise. But yeah, down to 45 at the airport, 42 Balverde, uh, a couple of 38s out there, Kerrville and Comfort, 43 in Hondo. And in some places, there is a hint of a breeze. So it feels like 42 here in town, 36 Lost Maples, and uh, 41 is the wind chill right now in Holotus. Wind is uh, very, very light. I mean, Think with these temperatures, if we had the wind from a couple of days ago, what the wind chills would be like still. Grab a jacket and you'll need it probably through about noon time because it's going to uh, finally get up to about 60 at noon today. A uh, mole's on the high side. Oak is moderate, although both of those numbers went down considerably from the uh, their respective numbers a couple of days ago. Hopefully, oak is coming to an end. Throughout the rest of the morning, temperatures are going to be about mid to lower 40s, even like, those, uh, like we saw those upper 30s in parts of the hill country. And we make it up to 60 today at noon. Wind is going to be about 5, 10 miles per hour, so still enough of a breeze out there to maybe stand up and take notice. 70 for a high temperature. Yesterday, because of the cloud cover, we only got up to uh, 68 degrees. We'll make it up to 70 today, but still 10 degrees below normal. Another nice, cool morning tomorrow. Then it all comes to an end. We do have a couple of rain chances to talk about and some really hot temperatures, about double of what they are right now by the middle of next week. More on that coming up. Time saver traffic. Here's Officer Marcus Trujillo. And I know you had been talking about a couple of big accidents still going on. Well, we had that accident down 41037. That's cleared out of the way. Oh, okay. But we have another one to take its place. And that one is going to be westbound I-10. This one just coming in, westbound I-10, right at Pasadena. So that's going to be just past Hildebrand. Uh, that's where the, you're exiting if you're trying to make it to over to Fresno off of westbound I-10. So watch out for emergency vehicles responding to that accident. Take a look outside through Transguide, a little bit uh, closer to downtown, 10 at Kuleva Road. You can see the upper and lower levels of eastbound and westbound 10 right here, moving pretty good. Mark? Thank you, Marcus. A second San Antonio firefighter has tested positive for the coronavirus. The news confirmed by Fire Chief Charles Hood in a statement late last night. Our Katrina Weber is live downtown with details. We know firefighters live in pretty close contact with another one another when they're working, Katrina. What about their coworkers? Yeah, that is a big concern. The fire chief did say that right now efforts are underway to, to determine who else may have been at risk. Uh, he says what he has been able to determine so far is that the second firefighter is based out of the same fire station as the first one who tested positive. But he says they work different shifts. 
That second firefighter was sent home Saturday after feeling sick at work, one day after the first one showed symptoms of the illness. Now, tests later confirmed the COVID-19 diagnosis for both of them. The chief says Metro Health and the fire department are working together to do contact tracing. That is, figuring out who else had close contact with them. He says once they get the results, those other people will be quarantined immediately and tested if necessary. The statement did not say that, or did say that crew members of the second firefighter were sent home in the meantime to self-isolate. The chief did not specify which fire station the two uh, called home while they were working. But uh, again, he does say that tests are being done right now to determine who else may have been at risk or in close contact with those two firefighters. Reporting live downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you very much, Katrina. The latest numbers show Bear County has 815 confirmed cases of COVID-19. And there are a lot of questions about when we'll see a peak of the coronavirus curve. Max, Cur Max Massey rather joins us live near downtown. So do we have an answer this morning? Good morning, guys. Well, this morning, some of that data is showing that we could see a peak of the confirmed cases of the coronavirus here in Bear County at the end of this month or even into mid-April. But local officials say that this could all change, that this all stems from information we received from a press conference last night where the assistant city manager, Dr. Colleen Bridger, joined Mayor Ron Nuremberg and County Judge Nelson Wolf talking about four different models that would be coming to the city's website. Now, the assistant city manager says that the models will be frequently updated as more data becomes available. These models will measure peak number of infections and projected total cases for our area. Bridger also says that two of the models are from researchers at UTSA, one is from a management consulting firm, and the last one is from the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation. She also says that these models project that at the peak of the virus here in Bear County, we could see as few as 1,100 total cases, but as many as 10,000 total cases. Mark, Leslie. All right, Max, thank you very much. Well, local leaders are worried about an outbreak at the Bear County Jail after six more positive cases were identified yesterday. Eight people in total have now tested positive in the jail. Sheriff Javier Salazar says one of the inmates who tested positive was not showing symptoms, and it is possible the inmate infected more people in the jail. Health officials are now screening all inmates, and county officials say they want to have the ability to test anyone in the jail who shows symptoms by tomorrow. A team here in San Antonio developed a portable ventilator in case there's a shortage during the pandemic. The team made it just 14 days. Ventilator uses simple parts to automate a manual resuscitation device, which is the one you squeeze by hand to help someone get air into their lungs. The goal is to make it affordable with some common parts. It only costs $500 to make instead of tens of thousands for a normal ventilator. The portable device will now be tested for certification in hospitals. Amid the coronavirus pandemic, many have been focused on staying healthy, working, or keeping your family afloat. And you may have forgotten about your taxes. Well, today was the original deadline, of course, to file and make payments, but there's been a change. Alicia Bonetta, live with all the details on the new extension. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning. Well, yes, good news for all taxpayers and businesses. They'll have additional time to file as tax day has been moved until the summer. That's July 15th, which gives you an extra three months to file and you'll avoid any penalties or interest during that time. So you may be asking yourself, well, how do I qualify for this? Well, this change is completely, it's automatic, so no one has to request for the extension. But the sooner you file, the sooner you can get your refund, which could be useful for many at the moment. Here's some things to keep in mind when you file. First, make sure you have the right expert to avoid being audited. In 2015, there were more than 140 million tax returns submitted and only 1.2 million were audited. So look for a CPA or an enrolled agent, most charged by the hour. But if they charge based on your refund, that's a red flag. And avoid reporting a zero income also to be uh, audited. In 2016, over 3% of returns with no adjusted income were audited. Most importantly, double check your math. It is one of the top errors that has been, been reported by the IRS. And finally, don't leave anything blank on your form. Add a zero or even a dash, even if there is nothing to report. Again, the new deadline to apply for your income is on July 15th, and this only uh, applies to the federal income. And just like any other year, taxpayers can request an extension if they need that. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. 
Thank you, Alicia. 608 right now this morning. Resurrection United Methodist Church will host a food distribution event. They're partnering with the San Antonio Food Bank to do so. It kicks off at 9 this morning at the corner of Knowlton and New Silver Springs Roads. That's one block west of East Central High School. Today, KSAT will host a San Antonio Questions virtual town hall about local innovative solutions to the coronavirus pandemic. Steve Spreester will talk to Mayor Ron Nirenberg and local bioscience experts about what's being done in our community. He will ask questions, our viewers submit, so be sure to go to our website. Tell us what you want answered. It starts this evening at 6.30 on KSAT 12. It will be live streamed on KSAT.com from 7 to 8 tonight. New this morning, a man behind bars after he drove right off the road and hit a pole. The crash happened around 2.45 this morning in the 500 block of West Cesar Chavez, just west of downtown. According to police, the man crashed into the pole in the back lot of the Doubletree Hotel across the street from the police central substation. Police suspect the cause of the crash due to possible DWI. No injuries were reported. Right now, we're at about nine minutes past the hour, 45 degrees. Staying at home does not mean you miss everything. In fact, if you just open your eyes, you may see something truly special. We're going to show you one of those special moments caught on camera by one of our photographers. A Democratic heavyweight supporting Joe Biden for president. See what former President Barack Obama had to say about his two-term vice president after the break. And live cam giving us a look outside. Another nice day today. Nice and cool this morning. We're in for another treat. Six thirteen. Welcome back on your Wednesday morning, the day after Senator Bernie Sanders endorsed Joe Biden to close out the 2020 Democratic primary fight. Former President Barack Obama has made his support official. The former President backed Biden in a long video message and weighed in on other topics too. CNN's Karen Kaifa has details. Bernie Sanders on Monday and former President Barack Obama on Tuesday. Two top Democratic voices signaling it is time for the party to really dig into the general election phase of the 2020 presidential fight. Obama endorsing his former Vice President Joe Biden on Tuesday and also reaching out to Bernie Sanders supporters and taking aim at President Trump. We haven't heard much from Obama during the long Democratic primary process, although back in November he said he'd spoken with all of the candidates who'd entered and exited visited the race. In a video message nearly 12 minutes long, he talked about some of the greatest challenges of his administration, like the Great Recession, the H1N1 pandemic, the Ebola crisis, and how Joe Biden was a critical part of the response. He also talked about the recovery that will lie ahead for the United States and for an American president. And I believe Joe has all the qualities we need in a president right now. Through all his trials, he's never once forgotten the values or the moral fiber that his parents passed on to him and that made him who he is. That's what steals his faith in God, in America, and in all of us. Biden thanked Obama for the support in a tweet saying it means the world to both him and his wife, Jill. It's expected Obama will participate in some virtual events and online fundraising for Biden's campaign soon. And Obama didn't mention his successor by name, but criticized President Trump and the Republican Party as not interested in progress, but power. And that is why Obama signaled it is time for Democrats to put the primary fight behind them and look ahead to November. And so he had high praise for Bernie Sanders, touching on some of the issues that are at the heart of the progressive movement, like climate change and income inequality, as Biden tries to bring those supporters into his camp for the November election. In Washington, I'm Karen Kaifa. Quarter past the hour, 45 degrees. Time to check on the roadways this morning. What's happening, Marcus? Well, we're still clearing that major accident, so we're moving up I-10. So from the downtown area, if you head out I-10 westbound towards 410, first you have to pass Hildebrand and then Pasadena. That's right where the exit ramp is uh, if you're exiting for Fresno. That's where that major accident is currently in the clearing stages. Now take a look outside I-10 Days of Allah. Not too bad out there. Eastbound, westbound lanes running smoothly. 410 and Jackson Keller, no problems right now. Thank you, Marcus. Uh, Mike has a picture that features some fun fungi this morning. <laughs> fun <laughs> fungi. Uh huh. I'll it does. You to think of that okay. one. About two seconds. <laughs> okay. Did somebody put the actual sharpie marks on there, or were those on there? So not sure. I don't know. Hmm. Makes a cute little. Face. Mark, did you take the sharpie off my desk? <laughs> no, I don't. I, I, <laughs> hey, as a matter of fact, let me give this back to you. <laughs> <laughs> He did. Uh, thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. And surprisingly interesting what you see when you uh, 
you know, kind of walking around town. All right, looking off to the east, we're not seeing the glow of the sunrise as of yet. That should be in about, what, 15, 25 minutes, something like that. 37 right now in comfort, 45 at the airport, 42 Bulverde. These are actual air temperatures. Then there's a bit of a breeze, so feels like 42 in town, and the wind chill is 40 New Braunfels, 35 in Lost Maples. So not much of a breeze. As a matter of fact, in some areas where it is much colder, the air is calm, and so that's allowing the heaviest, coldest air to settle down on the surface. So that's why we're seeing even colder actual temperatures, but obviously we still have that wind chill to deal with in some places. Now, humidity is very low, of course. We've got, you know, clear skies, light wind, and uh, low humidity, and those are the three ingredients for all this radiational cooling. And it's going to be staying low throughout the day, so it's going to be comfortable once again today. Beautiful day, plenty of sunshine. Humidity is going to be low enough. Dew points will still be uh, low enough tomorrow morning to give us a nice crisp start again. But then humidity will start to work its way back in here throughout the afternoon and tomorrow night. By Friday morning, it looks like as all this moisture continues to pump in here from the Gulf of Mexico that we will see a little bit of uh, some scattered sprinkles around the area, maybe just mist and drizzle. Now, as far as cloud cover, we'll have a lot of sunshine today, but we do have some moisture aloft in the atmosphere, so maybe some of that, uh, well, just that milky shade to the sky. Yes, that is snow from Chicago down towards St. Louis, parts of the Great Lakes. They've had even some lake effect snow in the Lee of Lakes up there in uh, northern Michigan and more wintry weather that's moving into uh, Montana, the northern Rockies. All this, though, is kind of staying up uh, there to the north of us. Now, as far as rain chances around here or even clouds. Nothing really going on today nor tomorrow morning to start off, but we will see more clouds move on in here throughout the afternoon tomorrow, especially tomorrow night and as Friday, of course, with the chance for a couple of showers around here after that morning mist and drizzle. Same thing on Saturday. We will have a bit of a front move through Friday, Saturday. So in what we get in what we gain in temperatures tomorrow in the upper 70s back down to the low 70s for Friday, Saturday and then Sunday, Saturday night into early Sunday morning. Another wave is going to move through. Give us another chance for some rain early on Sunday. Then that'll clear on out and then we heat up. It's back up into the mid 80s by Sunday. We're looking at upper 80s and even some low 90s by the middle part of next week. 60 today at noon, mostly sunny skies. Good looking day out there. Not much of a breeze and then 70 for a high temperature today. A little bit above yesterday, but still 10 below normal. No complaints here tomorrow. Cool start 77 for a high temperature, mostly sunny skies, although we will have a few more clouds building in Friday mist in the morning and then a shower or two is possible in the afternoon. Notice Friday and Saturday 73s and a couple of showers. Then after morning showers and a few thunderstorms Sunday, Back to the 80s. Wow. Pushing 90 there. I'm to start yeah. preparing our bodies for summer anyway. Yeah. It's around the corner. You know, it's funny because even leaving work yesterday morning, you kind of think it's like, wait a minute. It's just a couple of days ago. It was hot and humid, and then now it's chilly, and it's going to be and hot I'm and humid I'm loving it. Every couple of days. So, oh, hi. <laughs> it was got a close-up there. <laughs> <laughs> Always be my hair. So. Uh, like oh, I you. got it again. So Yeah, I know. It's, it's just mixing fun. things up. Okay. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> Who's directing? We God? love this show, by the way. You're you're awesome. 620, 45 degrees. Part of the efforts to defeat coronavirus come down to cleaning and washing our hands to disinfecting surfaces. In your GMA first look, we'll see some best practices for doing laundry. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a hot dog or kolache. We are Circle K. Keep it clean with the Roomba Robot Vacuum. Only Roomba uses two multi-surface rubber brushes to clean all your floors. And with patented dirt detect technology, Roomba finds dirt throughout your home. If it's not for my robot, it's not a Roomba. Before discovering Nexium 24-Hour to treat his frequent heartburn, Stephen could only imagine enjoying a spicy taco. Now his world explodes with flavor. Nexium 24-Hour stops acid before it starts for all-day, all-night protection. Can you imagine 24 hours without heartburn? It's a challenging market. Edward Jones is well aware of that, which is why we're ready to listen and ready to help you find opportunity. So let's talk. Edward Jones, it's time for investing to feel individual. 
It's a familiar story. Allergies ruining your sleep and next day too. Taking Zizol at night relieves allergies while you sleep, so you wake refreshed. Plus, it works faster than Claritin and on first dose provides the same relief as Zyrtec at nearly half the size. Be wise all. Take Zizol at night. In this morning's GMA First Look, laundry in the age of coronavirus. The CDC says launder items according to the manufacturer's instructions. Use the warmest appropriate water setting and dry items completely. The experts at Good Housekeeping add. So you want to use warm water, the warmest water that's safe for the fabric based on the care label recommendations. But don't put in extra soap thinking it makes things cleaner. And don't overload your washer. You want clothes to circulate freely. We want to make sure that those clothes are, are, are dried well after. It's very likely that even the drying process is going to damage the virus or, or kill the virus. And what should you do if you share a washer dryer in an apartment building or laundromat? And a reality check. Do you need to use bleach or gloves? We have some expert tips coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Becky Worley, ABC News, Oakland. Okay, this may be our favorite story of the day. Staying at home can all help us uh, pay attention to things we may have otherwise not even noticed. For our photographer, Bill Caldera, and his son, William, that is a bird nest in their backyard. Here's a look at the nest over the course of the stay home, work safe order. I'm in my backyard, and as you can see behind me, there is a flower pot with a bird nest in it. It's made out of yarn. Because I saw the dad bird bring the mom some yarn to put in the nest. And then it's also made out of leaves. And the bird lives in there and it's laid five eggs. And my mom thinks we should name all the five eggs the name of the week. I think we should name them Eeny, Meeny, Miny, Mo. A couple of times we saw the mom and dad bird starting to like help each other. We think the bird is called a Carolina wren. It has a yellow belly and it's got brown feathers. It's kind of tiny, like a little chick. They like to eat insects. The camera has showed us some funny things like the um, bird hopping out of the nest. He's like, I'm here to take my picture, please. And he flew away. In the daytime, there's light, so there's color, and you can see the bird. But at nighttime, it's all black and white. I'm William Caldera in my backyard, KSAT 12 News. Right, he is just absolutely adorable and made for television. Our favorite. He is so cute. What a smile. I hope he does a lot more of those. Thanks to Bill and Shannon and for William for his great job. The commentary on the nest on their back porch. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, So cute. Great. 626 now and 45 degrees. Well, the president stopped off funding the World Health Organization yesterday. We'll see the response to the president's actions. And it turns out flushable wipes aren't so flushable. And improperly disposing them could lead to major problems in your community. Ew. Ew. A second member of the San Antonio Fire Department now has tested positive for the coronavirus. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. The fire chief confirmed that in a statement late last night. I'll tell you more about it. Local officials tell us that we could see the peak of the coronavirus anywhere between mid-April and even into May. Good morning, I'm Max Massey. How they're able to determine this and what models are now becoming more available. President Trump has stopped funding the World Health Organization during the middle of a global pandemic. I'm Alex Brashe in Washington. I'll have details as to why. And if your furnace kicked on overnight or you needed to turn it on this morning, we're not at all surprised. We're in the mid 40s out of San Antonio International Airport. Good morning to you. It is Wednesday, April 15th. Thanks for being with us this morning, everybody. It feels really nice out there and enjoy it while you can because the warmer weather's on the way. Oh, yeah which we'll get to in a minute, but that, uh, behind you is a beautiful shot too. Yeah, so take your sunglasses if you're hitting the roads, right? Yep. You will need those, and uh, 
Unfortunately, we do have an accident, major accident. That's the second one this morning. Past two days been fairly decent. Uh, this morning, uh, not so much. So that one's a uh, westbound I-10, just leaving the downtown area right after Hildebrand. All right, warm up your car a little bit because, yes, it is pretty nippy out there. But look at the beautiful, beautiful uh, early glow of the sunrise. Couple of wispy clouds there along the horizon. Now, there is some moisture upstairs in the atmosphere, so we may have a milky shade of the sky later on today. But it's kind of split in hairs. I mean, it's going to be another just fantastic day. We're starting off at 45 degrees here in town. 38's uh, Comfort Kerrville, 39 Lost Maples. A little bit of a, uh, a wind chill in places. Feels like 42 here in town. 36 right now is the wind chill up the road and burning. Not much of a breeze, but just enough to add that little bite to some of these temperatures. Uh, Molda is on the high side. Oak is moderate. Both of those went down considerably from the previous day's readings. And we'll get the update, of course, in about uh, 45 minutes or so. Mostly clear, cool, mostly sunny. 70, beautiful again today. We'll still be 10, even though warmer than yesterday, still 10 degrees below normal. Now, tomorrow's going to be another great start, nice and cool and crisp. Then we're going to get a little bit warmer. Upper 70s, we'll also start to see the humidity begin its return later on in the afternoon. It's not going to be overly humid, but... You'll start to notice it a bit more. Then we go into Friday and the weekend, uh, much more humid, some sprinkles, some mist in the morning Friday, a couple of showers in the afternoon. And then same thing on Saturday. Temperatures will actually be in the low 70s Friday, Saturday. Some storms starting off on Sunday, but then it's going to be hot again in the afternoon. And then it's going to get really hot next week. Details coming up. Time saver traffic right now. So you said a major accidents on 10? On I-10. So if we're leaving the downtown area, take an I-10 westbound uh, right after we pass Hildebrand. There's that exit ramp that... Uh, it's right there by Pasadena, so if you're going to exit for Fresno, but right on the exit ramp, that's where we have that major accident currently in the clearance stage. It should be wrapped up here shortly. It's been with us for a little while. 35 there at Cesar Chavez, north and southbound lanes. We are starting to see increases in the volume, but not enough that, it'll, that it should slow you down this morning. 10 at Culebro so far, no problems there. I-10 and Frio, inbound, outbound lanes, still looking pretty good. Mark and Leslie. Thank you, Marcus. The San Antonio Fire Department now has a second case of coronavirus among its ranks. Chief Charles Hood made the announcement in a statement late last night. Our Katrina Weber is live downtown with more on that. So uh, are these cases connected? Do we know? Well, that's something the fire department is still working to determine. We do know from the chief's statement that the two firefighters lived under the same roof at the same fire station, although they work different shifts. Now, the, fire, the chief did not specify which station that was. We also don't know how much about how either contracted the virus. The statement says the second firefighter began feeling sick at work Saturday and was sent home. Crew members of that person also was sent home to self-isolate. This happened one day after the first firefighter began showing symptoms of COVID-19. Both of them later tested positive. Chief Hood's statement says Metro Health and the fire department are still working to find out who may have had close contact with both of them. And once they figure all of that out, they'll have a better idea of who may have to be quarantined and or tested. And the chief says that he will do that immediately to prevent the spread of any further or to prevent any further spread of the illness. Reporting live downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. This morning, we're told that the peak of the coronavirus here in Bear County could come in late April or mid-May, and we now know more about the models used to determine those numbers and projections. Max Massey joins us live near downtown. Max, let's start with the basics. How many models are being used right now? Good morning, guys. Right now, there are four separate models, two from researchers at UTSA, one from the Institute of Health Metrics and the University of Washington, and the last from international consulting firm. Now, like you guys said, we are expecting to see the peak of the coronavirus here in Bear County at the end of April into mid-May. And I mean, right now, guys, we are at 815 confirmed cases. So let's talk about those projected number of cases. To be frank, there is a wide gap in that projection. These cases could be at the peak of it, as low as 1,100 or as high as 10,000 plus cases. And in last night's press conference, the assistant city manager and former Metro Health Director, Dr. Colleen Bridger, compared these predictions to hurricane models, each with their own hat. And starting today, guys, you're going to be able to check out these models on the government website. And if you're interested, we have a link to go there. Just head to KSAT.com. Mark, Leslie. Thank you very much. Max, a nursing home that was planning to house patients with COVID-19 pulled out of its agreement with the city of San Antonio. 
Management at the Westover Hills Rehabilitation and Healthcare Center offered up the center without the city even asking them to do so. The hope was to prevent any more outbreaks like the one that already happened at a southeast side nursing home. But Westover Hills had a change of heart because of what was described as a backlash on social media platforms. Flushing wipes down the toilet could cause a community problem during the pandemic. SAWS Communications Director Ann Hayden says the term flushable wipes is an oxymoron and should not exist. Hayden says wipes don't break down in water like toilet paper does, which means they can get caught in the pipes. Too much gather in one place, the pipe could break and cause a water shortage during the pandemic where many people are staying at home. And with more people buying wipes as toilet paper flies off shelves, the more of a risk the community at large faces. Hayden says the best practice to simply throw the wipes in the trash when you're done. President Donald Trump is making global headlines after stopping U.S. funding for the World Health Organization during the pandemic. The announcement comes as plans move forward on how to reopen parts of the country. ABC's Al Alex Brechet has more. At the start of this outbreak, you might remember we heard the president put a lot of the responsibility on the states to take action. But now that some of these states have banded together to strategize on a reopening, it sparked debate as to how and when that should happen. This morning, a peek into what life might look like once shelter in place orders are lifted. Maybe having dinner uh, with a waiter wearing gloves, maybe a face mask, uh, dinner where the menu is disposable. The president saying he'd work with states on a strategy to reopen and that more than 20 could lift closures soon. But governors on both coasts, including states like California and New York, have already taken action, working together with other states in their regions to collectively decide when to reopen their economies. I'm not going to put any pressure on any governor to open. It's I'm a pivot from the president, who a day ago insisted he had total authority to set the terms of reopening the country. And one of the country's top health experts, Dr. Anthony Fauci, had this to say about President Trump's May 1st date to reopen. I think that's, that's you know, a bit overly optimistic. And this morning, new fears of a possible second wave of the virus. To prepare, the nation's largest antibody test, 38,000 employees at Beaumont Health Center in Michigan have started screening to see who has the COVID antibodies and could be immune. The CDC director saying these tests need to be in place ahead of the next spike. Also on the testing front, a new plasma treatment is being fast-tracked by the FDA. It allows patients who have had the virus and recovered to donate their blood. Alex Perchet, ABC News, Washington. Researchers say the U.S. may have to continue social distancing until 2022 unless a coronavirus vaccine becomes available. The group used data above COVID about COVID-19 and other similar viruses to create possible scenarios. They say wintertime outbreaks of the virus will probably occur. The study found social distancing measures may need to last for months to effectively control the transmission of the virus. Just about 640, 45 degrees. You're watching Good Morning San Antonio. We'll be right back. If you're scrambling to file your income taxes or worried about how you'll pay Uncle Sam, well, there's good news. You have three more months to figure it out as tax day has been moved to the summer. What that means for you just ahead on GMSA. Six forty two. Welcome back. What are you doing with your extra time at home during self quarantine? What about getting started on your taxes? Uncle Sam is cutting people a break this spring for their income taxes. Tax day has been moved to July 15th to give people extra time to file or make payments. But what about penalties or interest? Alicia Barrera is live with more details. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning. Well, the good news is you don't have to worry about those penalties or any interest. This change is automatic for every taxpayer. And again, it gives an extension until July 15th. This is good news for people. They don't have to scramble. They don't have to worry about paying back Uncle Sam just yet. This change gives you an additional three months to file. Um, but the sooner you can get your the sooner you file, the sooner you can get your refund, which of course could be useful for many at the moment. This extension is due to the coronavirus outbreak. And here's some things to keep in mind when you file and to avoid being audited. First, look for a CPA or an enrolled agent. Most charge by the hour, but if they charge based on your refund, that's a red flag. Avoid reporting a zero income, and most importantly, double check your math. It's one of the top errors that has been reported by the IRS. And finally, don't leave any blank, uh, any blanks on your form at a zero or a dash, even if there's nothing to report. And although the new deadline is three months from now, July 15th, all taxpayers can request a six month extension to file in case they need it. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News.
Thank you, Alicia. 644. Time to check on the roadways once again. And we still have this accident in the clearing stages. Now we have a shot of it on trans guide. So this accident, uh, major accident still in clearing stages. Westbound lanes of I-10 just past Hildebrand. We're actually going to look at the Hildebrand I-10 camera. So we're looking out westbound. You see on the access road there on that exit ramp, we do have some officers out there still blocking the lane. So it's in the process of clearing up. Looks like maybe just right now, they may be opening up that exit once again. So that's great news for folks. Take a look 35 at Cesar Chavez. No problems there and 1604 at Military. You could probably count just like the count from Sesame Street. One. The vehicles because there's so few vehicles out there. Mm, vehicle two. Three. No, but you have to laugh after each one. Ha, 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 ha. Three. <laughs> Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, uh, okay, that's what it's telling you. <laughs> <laughs> Battery's uh, dying out there. Uh, 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 <laughs> she needs more coffee. <laughs> uh, needs less coffee. And it's, uh, uh, maybe and both. It's only, and it's only Wednesday. No, what's in the coffee? That's the question. Anyway. Hmm. Caffeine. All right, uh, take a look at this picture. <laughs> and <laughs> love all the clouds. Yeah, there were a few of them around yesterday. Some folks were pretty well socked in with the clouds. A lot of folks had nothing but uh, sunshine. We are going to see a lot more sunshine today. Maybe that uh, milky shade of the sky. And wow, what a beautiful picture. A few clouds there along the horizon. The oranges and yellows and blues. Obviously, it's going to be a beautiful sunrise this morning. It's cold out there. 45 degrees here in town. We should be in the upper 50s right now, so almost 15 below normal. 39, Bernie, it's down to 37 in comfort. A little bit of a wind chill in places. 42 in town, 41 in Lotus. Wind is not strong at all, but cool temperatures doesn't take much to add that little bit of a wind chill. And as far as the humidity, one of the reasons why it's been so comfortable and what has allowed temperatures to get so cool, it's going to be staying on the low side throughout the day today and a good chunk of the day tomorrow, at least the morning hours. Then throughout the afternoon, we start to see these numbers come back up. It's still pleasant with dew points in the 40s, but then humidity really comes back in here later on tomorrow night and then into Friday. And as that moisture surges back in here, we could actually see a little mist and drizzle early in the morning on Friday. Now, as far as any cloud cover, obviously there is nothing going on right now. I mean, one or two little clouds out there and some of that high level moisture. Yes, that is notice a big sweep coming through here. This huge trough up there in uh, southern Canada, northern United States. Yeah, and there's a lot of snow, not only in the Rocky Mountains, but also in and around the Great Lakes. A lot of lake effect snow still coming in here off the lee of the lakes uh, around Michigan and uh, Wisconsin up around Canada as well. Now, all that's going to be staying up there in the north. Obviously, we're on kind of the leading edge of it around here, but that cold, cold air will eventually kind of just settle back up there to the north. As far as clouds today, really nothing. I mean, some high wispy ones out there, a little, uh, little excess moisture loft in the atmosphere. We start off with sunshine tomorrow. Clouds definitely increase throughout the uh, late afternoon and evening hours tomorrow night. A couple of showers are possible during the day Friday as well as Saturday. There's a weak front that moves through here Friday. So we go up into the upper 70s tomorrow afternoon, but then back to the low 70s Friday, Saturday. Then another little disturbance comes through Sunday. More showers and a couple of thunderstorms early on Sunday. Those will be clearing on out and then we heat up and it's going to get hot. We'll be in the mid 80s on Sunday and then mid to upper 80s going into the middle part of next week with the humidity. 60 today at noon, mostly sunny skies and high today up to 70. So a little bit above yesterday, plenty of sunshine, some uh, high wispy clouds, maybe milky shade to the sky and uh, about 10 degrees below normal still. Cool start tomorrow, make it up to 77. So just about normal. And then notice the, with the humidity coming back in here, we stay in the low 60s Friday morning and only the low 70s with a couple of showers scattered about here. Same thing on Saturday. That then Sunday, a few showers and thunderstorms starting off, and in the afternoon, up to 85 degrees. Wow. Mother Nature can't make up her mind this week. This has been an unusual and interesting first couple of weeks of April as far as temperatures. So we just need to enjoy these next couple of days. Yep. Thank you, Mike. Right now we're at 648, 45 degrees. Smart devices supposed to provide you with convenience and safety, but they can also put your security at risk tomorrow on GMSA. Find out what you need to know about not so smart devices. And live cam giving us a peek outside. Look at your television, everybody. What a beautiful sunrise.
And now there are two. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. A second San Antonio firefighter has tested positive for the coronavirus. In a statement late last night, Fire Chief Charles Hood made that announcement. He says both cases so far have involved firefighters from the same fire station, although they work different shifts. He says the second one became sick at work Saturday, one day after the first firefighter began showing symptoms. That second firefighter was sent home and later tested. Fellow crew members also were sent home to self-isolate. The chief says efforts now are underway to determine who had close contact with both of those firefighters. He says once they determine who those other people might be, then they immediately will be quarantined and tested if necessary. Reporting from downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. This morning, Bear County has at least 815 confirmed cases of the coronavirus, but the latest projections show that at the peak of the virus here in the county, we could see as little as 1100 confirmed cases and as many as 10,000 cases. Good morning, I'm Max Massey. Here's what we know about those models this morning. Now, there are four separate models that local officials are looking at. Two are from UTSA, one is from a consulting firm, and one is from the Institute for Health Metrics out of the University of Washington. We are told that the UTSA models include social distancing efforts in the area. We're also told that none of the models are tracking COVID-19 related deaths. Now, Assistant City Manager and former Metro Health Director Dr. Colleen Bridger compared these projections to hurricane models, each with their own path. And the latest projections from these models show that we could see a peak here in Bear County as early as late April and as late as mid-May. Now, we do expect to see these models on the government website. And if you're interested, we have a link to direct you there on KSAT.com. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. It's Wednesday, April 15th, which originally meant tax day, but due to COVID-19, things have changed. There's been an extension, which is until the summer on July 15th. And what this means is all taxpayers and businesses have until July 15th to file or pay Uncle Sam. That gives people an additional three months to avoid any interest or penalties. But of course, the sooner you file, the sooner you can get your refund. And here's some things to keep in mind when you do file. First, make sure you have the right expert to avoid being audited. Look for a CPA or an enrolled agent. Most charge by the hour, but if they charge based on your refund, that's a red flag. Most importantly, double check your math as it's one of the top errors that has been reported by the IRS. And finally, don't leave anything blank on your form. Maybe add a zero or a dash, even if there's nothing to report. And although the new deadline is on July 15th, taxpayers can request a six month extension just like any other year. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT. 12 news five till seven time to check the roadways once again Marcus well as we take a look at the roadway still just this one accident and that accident is going to be uh, that just cleared up a minute ago so let's take a look uh, as traffic is flowing again 6-0 Ford military but that was where the accident was you can see I-10 and Hildebrand eastbound and westbound main lanes running smoothly right now just remember buckle up stay home work safe but if you do have to leave the house make sure you cover up once you exit your vehicle Cover up, wear a coat, because it's cold out there. Beautiful, clear skies, 45 degrees in town, 39 up the road toward Bernie, 37 in comfort. A little bit of a wind chill to deal with. Feels like 41 degrees right now out there at the airport. 70 for a high temperature today. Beautiful. Another cool start tomorrow, and then... Things start to warm up uh, tomorrow afternoon. More humidity comes back in here. A couple of sprinkly showers Friday, Saturday, and some early morning storms Sunday. And then we really start to heat up. And don't forget, next week, we're going to be re-airing all of last year's Fiesta Parade. We are encouraging everyone to have a fiesta yep. in their own home That's and right. watch the parades and throw a party, dress up. We're going to have watch right parties, food. too. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. Thanks for being with us, everybody. Go out there and make it a great Wednesday. GMA is next.